The Lone Ranger. With the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. A cloud of dust, a flash of light, and a hearty Hyo Morita, the Lone Stranger, eats again. Can't let these devils get their hands on our Marita white bread pronto. No, because me want get my butter on Marita. Also peanut butter, jams, jellies. And chicken, cold cuts, and coyote meat. Right pronto. Marita is perfect for everything. It's baked while you sleep, so it's the freshest, best tasting white bread. Missed me, you wanton criminal. And me want an Marita. Also, children want Marita for lunch and snacks. So does the man who appreciates a really good sandwich. And the woman who wants to serve only the best. Look, them waving white flag. No, they're waving a white bread. And going away. Right, they know they can never hope to equal the fresh baked white bread goodness of Marita. Good. Now, me one sandwich. Not plain coyote meat? No, coyote and cream cheese. Tune in again for those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Stranger Eats Again. Hiyo, Marita! Away! his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am still Dr. Frank Rockford approached a small farmhouse in the foothills, several miles inland from Eagle Pass, Texas. Oh, oh there. Oh, is it? He stood a moment waiting as his ten-year-old daughter Sally ran to meet him. Hi. Did you bring me something from town? No, Sally, not this time. Oh. Maybe next time, honey. You run along and play. I have to talk to your mother. All right, Daddy. Frank, I didn't expect you back from Milton so soon. I didn't stay, Mary. Oh. I, I don't know how long I'll be able to go on like this. I know how you must feel, dear. Sometimes I wonder if running away was the thing to do. No one in this territory knows I'm a doctor. They think of me as a small farmer. <laughs> By now they must know I'm not a very good farmer from the little I managed to make. I... I saw a handbill in front of the marshal's office this morning. It said, Wanted on suspicion of murder, Dr. Rockford. Oh. Clean-shaven, medium-height, blue eyes. But no one would recognize you with that heavy beard and with the different name. Perhaps not. But it was a shock reading that handbill. And even though we've convinced Sally our name is now Frankfurt and that I'm a farmer, I... I'm always afraid she may run into somebody and make a slip. Frank, we know you didn't kill anyone. The facts were against me, Mary. I couldn't stay in Kansas City and face a trial. I almost wish you had, Frank. We can raise enough here to feed us, but our savings are gone, and we'll not be able to meet the payments on the farm. I know how worried you are, but maybe if you gave yourself up... No. No, I can't do it. I... I'll manage somehow, as long as you stick by me. I... I'll go work in the field. That afternoon, the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Tonto, headed south toward Eagle Pass on the Rio Grande. As they approached the entrance to the doctor's farm, Tonto pointed and spoke. Look, Kimasabi, 
little girl near trail. And there's a small dog and ground. The dog seems to be hurt. We'll stop a moment. Who's it? Who's it? Hello there, little girl. What's the matter with your dog? Easy, silly. Easy, 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 easy. Golly, you mad me. Don't be afraid. Is your dog hurt? Uh, no, I'm playing doctor. But Rags won't lie still. All right, Rags, you can get up now. Hmm, uh, where did you get that doctor's bag? That's not a toy. Oh, no, it's real. I found it in Daddy's closet. May I look at it? Sure, here. Thanks. Oh, is your father a doctor? He's a farmer. He told me so. Hmm. What's your name, little girl? Sally Frankford. Oh, there's a car good inside the bag. Dr. Frank Rockford. The doctor must have left this with your father. I don't know. I found it in the closet. Well, I'm sure your father wouldn't want you to use these instruments, Sally. Perhaps you better take the bag back and put it where you found it. Here. All right, mister. Is he a wild Indian? <laughs> oh, me plenty tame, Sally. Not of my friend, Sally. Do you always wear a mask? Well, most of the time, but never mind the mask. Take the bag back before your father misses it. All right. Come on, Red. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, Adios. Sally. <laughs> easy, Scott. Big fella. Easy, Scott. Easy, fella. Stranger farmer would have a doctor's kit in the house, Toto. Ah. All right, let's go. I want to reach Eagle Pass by sundown. Come on, Toto. Come up, Scott. By the time the masked man and Indian reached the outskirts of Eagle Pass and stopped to make camp, a steady rain was falling. Oh, Silver, oh, easy, easy, steady, big fella. Easy, we'll build a lean-to, Toto, for shelter. Ah, rain needed plenty much. It's been dry a long time. Yes, I hope it rains enough to do some good. Let's get busy, Toto. Ranger's hope was not in vain. The rain continued to fall heavily for the next three days. The morning of the third day, Toto returned from a trip into town. We bring back handbills from town, Kimosabi. Here, three. Oh, I'll look them over. Hmm, one on the outlaw, Tex Logan. Last we heard of him, he was up near El Paso. That's right. Here's one about an escaped prisoner thought to be in Stockton territory. The third one is about a doctor from Kansas City. One of them is a murder suspect. Dr. Rockford. Tell her we'll go... Wait. The name Dr. Rockford was on a card in the medical kit we saw the little girl playing with a few days ago. That's right. Tell her the rain is letting up. We'll ride up the river trail first and search for that escaped prisoner. Then we'll go back to that farm near Milton and have a talk with Sally's father. Uh, it's a good idea. We'll leave right now. Perhaps by noon the rain will have stopped. All right, let's get the horses. Later, as the two men rode up the Rio Grande Trail, the rain stopped falling. The Lone Ranger was saying, Otto, though the rain has stopped, I've noticed something. Huh? What that? The water in the Rio Grande seems to be rising steadily. I don't like it. It's still far down from top of bank. Yes, I know. But I remember a few years ago, after a prolonged rain, when the river fed by streams in the mountainous regions to the north reached flood proportions. Oh, me remember. The terrain around Eagle Pass and on down from there is fairly flat. If the waters do rise enough to overflow the banks of the river, many lives will be endangered. Who's over who? Oh, scout. Otto, I don't think the people there will realize the danger. Um, what we do? We'll go back and warn them before it's too late. Come on, Silver. Come on, Scout. It was dusk when the Lone Ranger and Toto rode along a back street and stopped at the sheriff's office in Eagle Pass. The masked man identified himself to the sheriff, then convinced him that there was danger of a flood within a short time. The sheriff, with a worried expression on his face, asked, Great day, mister. What'll we do? What do you suggest? I suggest the women and children be sent to higher ground in all available wagons. Then the men must build a dike of sandbags along the riverbank bordering the town. Above and below the town, the canyon walls are high enough to retain the floodwaters. Good idea. The riverbank is low only where it borders the town. 
A sandbag dike should keep us from being flooded out. And someone should be sent to warn the people of Laredo. I'll send a deputy to warn them. Let's go talk to the folks down by the river. Right. Most of the men of town were lined along the riverbank, watching the turbulent waters. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, look. The sheriff with a masked man and engine. Now, now listen, everybody. These are friends. You can take my word for that. They came here to warn us of danger. What danger? I'll let the masked man tell you that. Listen to what he has to say. Uh, men, men, there's no time to lose. The water will rise much higher. There's danger of a flood here in Eagle Pass and south of here, too. The rain stop, mister. The water will be going down before long. No, you're wrong. The water will drain from the hills. The flood crest will come later, I'm sure of it. We must take the women and children to high ground and build a levee of sandbags. We must act now, or it will be too late. Hey, right, look, look, look up the river. Big wave moving down this way. Hey, oh. The first flood crest, and it will be followed by a bigger one. Hurry, get the women and children out of town. Eagle Rock may soon be underwater. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. A cloud of dust, a flash of light, and a hearty Hayo Morita. The Lone Stranger eats again. What are you doing, stranger? I'm baking up these flaky rich Morita brown and serve rolls, pronto. Them smell heap good, but no can do over open fire. Why not? It's a on package to bake in medium oven. Well, I made a medium fire. Uh, then it okay, me guess. You guess right, pronto. These Morita rich brown and serve rolls bake up to a mouth-watering flaky rich golden brown. The perfect hot rolls for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And they come freshly baked and piping hot from your fire in just six minutes. Uh, but good for family with many papooses. No, Pronto. The plural of papoose is papoosai. Uh, me may be no good in grammar, but you no good in making coffee. Yeah. Well, do you think it's easy chasing bandits all day and then slaving over a hot fire at night? Tune in again for those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Stranger Eats Again. I owe Marita! Now to continue. The skepticism of the crowd vanished when they saw the threatening crest of water moving down toward them. The first crest passed, leaving the water lapping over the top of the riverbank. The Lone Ranger averted panic by putting the men to work evacuating the women and children and filling sandbags for a levee. A line of wagons left the town and headed toward the hills. The men who stayed behind worked frantically to build a retaining wall of sandbags along the low section of the riverbank before the expected large flood crest arrived. A full moon shone brightly on the hard-working men as they toiled through the night. Mexicans from the small settlement of Piedras Negras streamed across the wooden bridge from the Mexican side of the river by wagon and burrow. Toward morning, the Lone Ranger spoke to the sheriff. Sheriff, the bridge better be closed to prevent loss of life. The water's washing over it. It uh, may go out. Yeah, I reckon you're right. I think most everybody who wanted to cross has come over. I'll notify the bridge guards. A short time later, one of the townsmen pointed to the bridge and shouted excitedly. Hey, look! The bridge is shaking like it's going to give way. And there's an old Mexican trying to walk across. He won't make it. He's clinging to the bridge rail. He'll get down with the bridge. That man needs help. Nobody can reach him, mister. That bridge is about to go out. I'll try to get to him. Wait! You can't make it! Easy, steady, big fella. Come on, Hillary! Urging the great horse Silver forward, the masked man quickly reached the shaky bridge. Easy, Silver, easy, boy. The men along the riverbank watched tensely as the Lone Ranger rode toward the center of the bridge, where the old Mexican, panic-stricken, clung to the bridge railing. Hang on, I'll help you. Come on, Silver. A few moments later, he reached the old man's side. Oh, Silver, ho. Oh, I'll help you climb up behind me in a hurry. Gracias, senor, but it's no use. Give me your hand. Don't give up here. The, the, the bridge, soon it goes. You try to get ashore before it does. Hang on tightly. Come on, Silver. Easy, big fellow. We must make it. 
risking certain death, the Lone Ranger guided the great stallion carefully back toward Eagle Pass. The crowd watched spellbound as rumble after rumble told of the imminent destruction of the wooden structure. Then, just as Silver reached the end of the bridge... Oh, Silver, who? I'll help you down. There. Easy. Oh, I'm real glad this thing will save my life. Why, Thunder, I never thought you'd make it. If you'd been a minute hey, later... Come there! Great day, look. A wall of water coming down the river. The flood crest. I hope and pray that levee holds. Keep back, everybody! The sandbags held as the flood crest passed, leaving the water level higher than ever. All that day, the men worked, stopping leaks and strengthening the levee with more sandbags. The following morning, the waters were receding slowly, when one of the men who had gone to take the women and children to safety rode to find the sheriff. Hey, 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 hey. Boy, sheriff, an epidemic of fever has broken out in the big temporary camp we made in the hills. What? we got to find a doctor. The only doctor I know of is in Laredo, and they're likely having their own troubles. Anyway, we couldn't get through to him there. What do you think we ought to do, mister? We'll go and do what we can for them, Sheriff. Of course, without proper medication, the situation may become desperate. Where is the camp located? About a mile from Milton. Back in the foothills. Let's go, Toto. Uh-huh. I'll go with you. Easy, steady, big fellow. Come on, Silver! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Later, as the three men passed the doctor's farm on the way to the camp near Milton... Easy, Silver, easy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hobby. Yes. There where we see a little girl with dog the other day. Her playing doctor. Yes, yeah, she had a doctor's kit. Uh, where did she get a doctor's kit? She said it belonged to her father, a farmer. I didn't question her further, but I... Toto, you and the sheriff ride on. I'll join you later. And I may bring a doctor with me. I'm going to stop at that farmhouse. Come on, Silver! Get, get up, up there. Come on! Come on. A short time later, the Lone Ranger knocked on the door of the farmhouse. Mask man, what? Please uh, forget the mask. I've come to talk to you. A matter of life and death. Well, come in. Thank you. Who is it, Frank? I... Oh, the mask man. Now, don't be frightened. Why have you come here? To talk to you, Dr. Rockford. Doctor, he, he called Let me you... handle this, Mary. Mister, I don't know who you are. But my name is Frankford, and I'm a farmer. I saw your little girl playing with a doctor's bag a few days ago. The name Dr. Rockford was in it. I don't know where she'd get such a thing. She said it was yours. Also, I read a handbill about a Dr. Rockford. Frank Rockford of Kansas City. Middle-aged, clean-shaven. Of course, it would be simple to grow that beard as a disguise. I don't know anything about Dr. Rockford. My name is Frankford. Oh? Well, I'm sorry to hear it. You've heard about the flood, of course, and about the people camped in the hills near town? Yes. Yes, we saw the wagons passing and heard the awful news. An epidemic has broken out at their camp. Many may die unless they have a doctor's help. Oh. I was hoping you are, Dr. Rockford. I know all doctors take an oath to save lives. The situation is desperate. Frank, I... Oh, Frank, you you must help them. You must. Then you are, Dr. Rockford. Yes. Yes, I am. I I left Kansas City because I was to be charged with a murder I didn't commit. A patient, a woman, died after an operation. Her husband threatened to kill me. He was found dead on the trail, ambushed, and a gun belonging to me was found nearby. Someone took it from my office. I didn't do it. I left town to avoid arrest. I understand. Will you come to the camp with me, Doctor? They need you very much. Yes, yes, I'll go. And later I'll give myself up to the authorities. I'll get my medical kit and we'll leave at once. The Lone Ranger and the Doctor rode hurriedly to the temporary camp. Oh, Silver. Oh, oh, easy, steady, big fellow. Howdy, mister. I've been waiting for you. Sheriff, I brought a doctor. Well, thank heaven. Glad to see you, Doc. Hello, Sheriff. I'll get right to work. If there's anything I can do... I have a small amount of medicine to combat the fever, but I'll need much more. Doctor, I suggest you write down the name of the medicine you want. Then have the Sheriff go into Milton and telegraph San Antonio for a supply. 
It can be sent by special courier. We must get it here as soon as possible. Just write down what you want, Doc. I'll get it off by telegraph within half an hour. The doctor's limited supply barely lasted until the medicine arrived from San Antonio. The Lone Ranger, under the doctor's directions, helped to give medication to the stricken people and to relieve the suffering. For three days and nights, they worked unceasingly with very little rest. Finally, the doctor spoke encouragingly. Mister, I think I can safely say the situation is well in hand now. Good. You've done a wonderful job, Doctor. Oh, here comes the sheriff. I think it's about time he learned the truth about me. Whoa, oh, hold there. Oh, steady there. Well, Doctor, thanks to you, things seem to be coming along fine. The folks sure are beholden to you and the mass man. Thanks, Sheriff. There's uh, something you ought to know. Oh, I uh, got some news for you, Doc. News for me? Uh huh. The masked man believed in you. So I went into Milton last night and sent a telegram. Just got the answer. Here it is. Listen. Sheriff Fields, care of Milton office. Dr. Rockford no longer wanted by the law. What? Real murder apprehended. Signed, Marshal Billings, Kansas City. I, I'm no longer a fugitive from justice. Nope. You're free to go your way, Doc. I, I don't know what to say, I... But now we'll give up the farm, and I'll practice again. I'm very happy for you, Doctor. I think the people of Eagle Pass would like to have you settle there. They sure would. <laughs> How about it, Doc? I'd like that. This is a wonderful country. Tonto and I'll leave now to trail an escaped prisoner. Sheriff, I'm sure you'll have plenty of willing hands to take care of things in Eagle Pass. Yep. Thanks to you, the water didn't do too much damage. As soon as possible, we'll move these folks back to their homes. Good. Tonto's waiting over there with our horses. We'll meet again, Doctor. Adios. Goodbye, Mr. Goodbye. Sheriff, I've met many men in my life, but he's the finest and most understanding I've ever met. Who is he? Huh. I thought you knew by this time, Doc. He's an hombre who always puts his country and other people first, regardless of the risks. You see, he's the Lone Ranger. Remember way back when, when you were a kid growing up, you always found time to make a side trip to the little grocery store down the block. That's where you'd find the big display of Mickey snack cakes. Remember? Didn't it make you happy to pick up a Devil Delight and take a whiff? What a chocolatey smell. And remember the coconut sprinkled Jim Jams or the cream filled banana flips? Well, today, Marita Bakeries still make the Mickey snack cakes you used to love as a kid. That's why Mickey snack cakes are called smile food. The bakers know they're spreading smiles and sunshine wherever Mickey snack cakes are sold. Find a little neighborhood grocery store today or a big modern supermarket. Look for the display of Mickey snack cakes. They're all there, like you used to remember the Devil Delights, the Jim Jams, the Banana Flips. Treat yourself to some fresh memories. Treat yourself to a Mickey snack cake. Have a smile on us. Listen to the Lone Ranger. As the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode away from a mission, the killers halted the land agent's wagon in a cottonwood oh, grove oh. nearby. Gus pointed with his whip. There's the bell tower. Yeah, and there's a light. It's in the Padre's house. I would keep the old fellow up so late. I don't know, but we can't wait for him to go to sleep. Yeah, well, let's get down and do it. Padre Philippe was deeply engrossed in reading the recovered manuscript. He had discovered that three pages were gone, freshly torn from the others. But he gave that mystery little thought, so great was his interest in what remained. As he traced the faded writing with a finger, there was a knock on the door. The padre looked up, puzzled. Who is there? Got a sick woman in my wagon. She needs your help. I'll be with you in just a moment. Grab him, Scrap. I've got him. Let loose of me. Shut up, or I'll let you have it with his knife. Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording at this same time.
copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy.